Welcome to episode 127 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're going to talk about what it's like to imagine everyone. That means I'm imagining all of you and you're imagining me at their worst. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. (laughs) Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I thought this was a topic that would be good to talk about this week. The principles of imagining other people at their worst is one of those broad principles that can affect us all the way through every relationship level of our life, all the way to the shallowest level of relationship, which is probably social media, people you don't know, the news and the media, uh, politics. So I'm going to explain what I mean. So what happens when something goes wrong in a relationship? Let's talk romantic relationships first, because it's probably the most potent. You have a relationship. Relationship, you fall in love with someone, you build a relationship, and then somebody does something. That something offends you. And, you know, we work through these little offenses through relationship. That's what relationship and depth of relationship is about. It's not about, you know, rainbows and sunshine and butterflies. It's about trials and walking through them and forgiveness and grace. It's about all those things, really. That's what builds relationship, self-sacrifice, these things. But something happens in relationship, and probably most of you have been through this. So you go through this period of like, I like you, I want to spend time with you, I think about you, I can't can't stop thinking about you. You mean everything to me. You make me feel great. You bring these things out of me that I love, right? And then something happens. And before you know it, you're like, well, all the things that I liked about you now are actually starting to annoy me a little bit. Um, I thought you were so free spirited and that was great, but actually you're kind of, you don't plan anything and uh, you're kind of fly by night and uh, you're kind of unorganized and messy, right? So we've pivoted now from free spirited and beautiful to like annoying, messy, you don't plan anything. The thing that I loved about you now becomes a thing that annoys the crap out of me. So getting back to my point, people start breaking down, relationships start breaking down if you don't really lean in and work on it. And then before you know it, you're imagining that other person's intentions behind everything they say, everything they do, as if it's an aggression toward you. Now, some, we, you know, in some bad relationships, that could be true, but most relationships, it's not like the person doesn't have it out for you. But all of a sudden, you know, imagining them at their worst, like they have the worst possible intention by doing that instead of the best possible intention. It happens at work all the time. You have a relationship and then somebody crosses you the wrong way or something happens and you're like, you know what they probably meant by that? They say one thing and you take it as a very deep personal offense. They must have meant this. You're imagining them at their worst. Let's talk about this. In society, you think the internet isn't full. I mean full of people imagining the other person at their worst based on one comment, one social media post, one affiliation with somebody else. And now all of a sudden there's venom, there's hate, there is aggressive language. People imagine the other person is at their worst. If you don't believe me, go on Twitter and look at any news station, any politician and just read the comments. And what has happened now, um, even in the news and the media, right? I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. There is this massive divide of other people imagining the other person at their worst. It's really generalizing entire groups of people and imagining them at their worst for their worst traits. And frankly, I'm getting very, 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 very exhausted by it. Um, It's exhausting. It's demotivating. It's sad. This is based on stereotypes. Well, we all have personal bias, bias biases. So we all have these personal biases where we meet a certain type of person, uh, maybe a person that's from a certain area, dresses a certain way, looks a certain way, acts a certain way, is involved with a certain group of people, people who are a certain gender, people who have had a certain type of family or make educational decisions, right? And as good human beings, we should always, always, always examine our personal biases. That, That can easily turn into prejudice. That means means not only do I have a bias toward it, but now I'm intentionally treating you differently. I'm I'm actually against you because I've executed my bias in my mind. When you make decisions with prejudice, meaning I'm making a determination, dropping the gavel on you because I have a predisposed position on you, your behaviors, where you come from, all this stuff personal biases. Everyone has them. We should always examine them. We can't live without a bias. You can't live without a bias. You try, but you can't. It's impossible. Back to imagining other people at their worst. Why does this happen? Well, basically it happens because there's a level of ignorance 
or a total erosion of trust that has happened at some point. So how do we get that back? How do we start to not treat people like they're at their worst or their intentions are at the worst? And sometimes this is really, really hard. And sometimes it's it's mostly impossible to get past it. But I will say this, it all begins with you. It all begins, you have control over this within yourself. You don't need anyone else to do anything for you to make positive change toward imagining other people at their worst. You can't control what other people think, but what you can do is control your end of it, navigating relationships, and you can work towards when you really care about somebody, right? We'll talk about a relationship again. When you really care about that, you can start to work toward breaking that down. I have a couple uh, just suggestions on how we might do that together so that I think we will all be better. Culture will be better. Our relationships will be better. Number one, you need to build trust. Trust totally dismantles this concept of imagining someone else at their worst. When there is no trust because there is no um, give and take, there is no um, transparency. When that happens, it's easy to imagine that someone else's intentions are wrong for you. You might have a boss that makes a decision that at face value, you might think, oh man, if you imagine them at their worst, you're like, they're out to get me. They're out to make my life miserable. They're out to ruin my career. They're out to keep me sidelined. But if you trust that leader, they've built trust. When they make a decision, even though at face value, it would be easy to imagine that it's for your worst. And I think that's human nature, right? Because fear wants to take over and want to think it's a bad thing. But if you trust that leader, guess what? You actually can be more objective with it put the bias aside and say, okay, let me look at this. Maybe this actually is good for me because I trust that their intentions are good. So build trust and you build trust by doing what you say. You build trust by giving when you don't have to. You build trust by sacrificing. So that's the first thing. Building trust dismantles this. So if you feel like this is the state of your relationship with someone, try to build some trust. Okay, if this is the state of your relationship with a certain, let's say, a political belief, liberals, conservative. Hey, if you're conservative and you want to put every liberal in a bucket that says, hey, they all want to dismantle our country and they all want to give, redistribute all the wealth and it'll destroy capitalism. And I don't think that's good. And they all want to get everything given to them. And they, you can do that and say that about everyone that has a liberal belief. But guess how you can start to dismantle that? Build trust and relationship with someone who is, has a liberal affiliation, because I promise you, you're already friends with them. I promise you, there are really great people who have a liberal political belief. The same goes for the other side. Conservatives, they want to do this and they just get, get rich and they want to control everything and they want to take away my freedoms and my personal identity. Guess what? Start to build some trust with some conservatives and you'll realize that most people don't live on the far left and far right. There's a lot of great relationships. So um, next thing, we got to keep moving. The next thing is you're going to have to be vulnerable. You are going to have to make the decision to be vulnerable vulnerable, which means you could get hurt if you expose yourself a little bit. But that's the only way to take a step forward. And being vulnerable is 100% within your control. This is especially effective in relationships. Be vulnerable, be honest, open handed. Finally, the last point, this is I think the most general, but also effective is I say it all the time, but pursue clarity. If you don't understand something, if you have a question on something, if you are assuming that somebody else is doing something to your detriment, guess what? You can pursue clarity. And here's an easy way to do that. Hey, uh, Mike, you know, you did this thing and I can't help but feel that your intention is to sideline me or get me out of the game so that you can go past me. I don't want to believe that that's your intention, but it's, it's just stuck in my mind. So um, can we just talk about that for a second? And then you give them an opportunity to clarify their intention. Look, maybe their intention is bad, but by pursuing clarity, you start to have a conversation that again can begin to increase transparency, increase clarity, build trust. And yes, to do that, you'll need to be a little vulnerable. So this week, I hope you will take a step with me to stop imagining one another at our worst and start to build trust start to pursue clarity, start to be vulnerable in a way that's productive, that moves us forward. I promise if you do these things, I promise if you put a stop to imagining people at their worst, I promise your relationships will get better. I promise your work life will get better. Or if you're in a toxic environment, you will leave and you will leave for a good reason. I promise it's going to take a long time and maybe and I'm, a, I'm an idealist, but I promise it will make society better when we, we try to reverse this tidal wave, this tsunami of imagining everyone at their worst. It seems almost like an impossibility during election season, especially. But I believe we can do it. It starts one at a time. So until next week, I hope you will go and work and push toward that with me and pursue clarity. I will see you next week.